Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about vital sex and tantric sex and the topic for this video is no story, no drama, keep it simple when you go tantric. This is a word of inspiration to uh, help cr create uh, safety, energetic and emotional connection. The key word here is emotional safety. Basically, what I mean by that is that if you have a big fight and you have lots of drama going on with your tantric lover, uh, the moment you start engaging sexually, it's going to be a little bit harder to open up your heart and relax and be in a place of reception, receiving, for instance, from, from that lover, when you know that that lover can freak out anytime and become emotionally abusive, attack you and see you as their enemy. So, you know, it's like... When you are engaging from a tantric sex perspective, you are really creating very deep energetic connections with, uh, with the lovers, with the, the people you are, you are sharing this energy with. So it's important to keep it safe and uh, to engage into uh, the tantric sex space with a clear set of values and, and intentions. So those intentions, those two intentions like no story, no drama. They are very powerful uh, mindsets that I've been personally using for many years. And when I meet somebody with who there is the potential to create a tantric partnership and really engage into a tantric exploration, tantric sex exploration, those are the words that I'm very often going to use. No story, no drama. So. I already mentioned the idea of emotional safety. No drama means that we create a safe space. Um, by itself, drama is not something wrong, okay? We can have lots of drama in life and you might have some drama in your life and you go like, you know what, I like my drama. I like becoming explosive and emotionally reactive to things because that's my right and I enjoy using my emotions in that way. And that's okay with me, okay? I'm not saying that there is any wrong with you expressing your shadows and voicing them and bringing them to the surface and creating energetic explosions. That's juice. Volcanic explosions are lots of energy. And uh, you voicing and expressing the full dimension of your emotions, it's, it's fine, it's beautiful. It's what I call conscious fights or vital fights. There's a whole area of the vital tantra system that is dedicated to honoring all the dimensions of emotion that you can have. Okay, so I'm not trying to get you to abstract yourself and suddenly become all holy, holy and sacred and uh, all your shadows are disappearing suddenly because of that. No, what I'm saying is this, uh, you have to check your intentions and what is the intention here? If your intention is to open up sexually to a person from a tantric perspective and merge energies and enter into, into a synchronistic, synergic wave of bliss and joy and uh, resonance together, then uh, sometimes creating emotional safety might work better than being in a state of emotional turmoil. So this is, uh, you know, this is my experience. It's as simple as that. Um, the, uh, when you are in processing mode or you are in explosive mode, suppose that you meet this, this lover with who there is lots of very intense emotions. By itself, this can be extremely beautiful. Now, I have the feeling that you are going to run out of energy and desire to engage with that person most of the times when the level of challenge and the level of processing crosses 50% of the time. Suppose that you spend five days together and you are processing like three days in the week. Um, that's a lot of processing. If you are in tension, you are in a state of anger or in a state of frustration, and that state is being sustained most of the time, that you're in a state of uh, explosive emotions and conflicting and fights, after a while, you know, you get tired of that situation and you tend to move out, you tend to take distance. You, if you are living together, you move out, you take your own place, eventually you still keep on seeing each other. But the idea is this, if you, your couple is processing 10 to 20% of the time, you can take that, you know, five days of fun, one day of processing, that's more or less okay, it can happen. If you are uh, 
two days of fun, three days of processing, that's usually not a very good balance because you are running out of energy. You're in the conflict mode all the time. And yes, again, some people feed themselves from conflict. It's a way of living and that's fine. It's okay. If it's your choice, you can totally go and play with these conflicting energies. But for the average person, you know, they come back home, they want peace and harmony. That's what most people are craving for. They are not craving for, oh yeah, let's have a big clash, emotional battle, enter into emotionally uh, or even physically abusive patterns and let's have a big explosion of energy. No, for most people that's not their dream day. Most people would like to be in a state of peace. It's like if you can be, uh, have the choice between being in a country which is at peace or a country which is at war, which one do you choose? Okay, so that's more or less obvious. And uh, yes, there is a moment where you decide to engage with challenges and that represents maybe 5 to 10% of, of your energy that you might be investing into that, especially when, when you're in a couple. So, um, yeah, the idea of no story and no drama is really the idea to create a certain sense of uh, safety so that everybody's having a good time. Um, <clears throat> so why do I say no story? Um, no story means literally that there is no future and there is no past. We are focusing really on the present moment. Uh, you might have a lover and uh, a tantric partner with whom you're engaging and you know that you have a time window which is maybe a week or a month. And after that month, the, your, your lover might be taking off, they might be going somewhere else. So when we are talking about consciousness expansion within the tantric sex space, we're not talking about necessarily building a long-term relationship commitment. We are talking about an experiment is like if you go to a yoga class um, and you are having you know a wonderful moment maybe the following day you go and have a yoga class with somebody else maybe you are going to be committed to have a yogic experience with that teacher for like maybe uh, a month or, or even a year but the point is that it's a conscious choice it doesn't come from a pressure to limit your freedom and so when it comes to tantric sex, very often the idea that you are there because you really want to, you're not there because anybody's forcing you to be there. And that's, that's an essential element. It's the, the, the element of, uh, of freedom and space and um, being in a space which is pressure free. So personally, when, when, if I engage into a tantric sex connection with somebody, I bring lots of lots of values and core mindset that are going to secure the space for me and for the other person. And uh, sometimes it will mean a certain commitment. For instance, if we decide to engage into a tantric sex practice reg regularly, you know, every day maybe for a couple of hours, we go, okay, we are going to practice that. We are going to practice some breathing techniques, or we are going to practice some sexual activation techniques, or we are going to engage into more subtle healing practices, you know, it's like whatever we engage into, once, I, once this commitment is said, then we try to, uh, to respect that commitment. But it needs to be a commitment that comes from two sources. So what I'm telling you here about is really the idea that there is discipline and structure sometimes in tantric sex. Yes, there is. You might go to a workshop and commit yourself to be there for a week, experimenting with a tribe of people and breathing together and experimenting with sensual uh, exploration or experimenting with sound and dancing and getting naked or God knows what, you know, but the point is that you are, um, you are committing yourself to a certain process for a certain period of time. And very often this commitment in the case of workshops and retreats is that you pay a certain amount of money and you are going to be there for a certain period of time. Now, when it comes to couples, you know, to tantric sex partners or lovers, then you can have the same kind of commitment without a financial agreement or with a financial agreement if uh, the, the person you are experimenting with is, is uh, your teacher or your, your, your guide or your, your healer. You know, so there are all sorts of formats that you can play with, but the point is, is that um, you can uh, really engage into a tantric sex uh, relationship or connection from a place where you really want to create no story and no drama. It means don't make it complicated, don't bring in elements that have to do with a whole totally different story. Um, just keep it, keep it simple. And uh, what is good to understand is that the, the tantric sex mindset is really about exploration of, of expansion of consciousness. And very often the, the story of exploration of consciousness and expansion of consciousness and spiritual experience, mystic, 
mystical exploration is going to overlap uh, the romantic and uh, traditional relationship model. It means that you have the romantic dream and then it merges with the tantric dream and then eventually the dynamics become more, more complex. And this is good to understand uh, uh, that, um, that this is what is very often happening. So I'm going to record another video and give you the different models of uh, tantric sex uh, energy because it's a very powerful thing to keep in mind that you have different sources of sponsorship, energetic sponsorship, once you enter into the sexual space. So I know that right now what I'm saying here, you know, it's lots of elements and lots of ideas. If you want to remember one thing from this video is try it for yourself. You meet somebody with who you want to engage tantrically. Here is what you say. You say, no story, no drama. Let's keep it simple. Okay? Try it. See if that matches for you. If it doesn't match, that's good. You can come up with a, another set of uh, uh, ideas or concepts or core values. But try it out. See if the, this, this way of communicating is going to be a good one for you. I'll see you soon.